Hello, everyone. It is Friday, and we are here. We have reconvened. It is time to rank 8-bit Nintendo games. I'm Jeff Gerstman. Welcome. We've been building the list over here, and it's, uh, well, it's, it's really, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the list. Sometimes in my off hours, I while away the time just staring at it and thinking about it. Thinking about Bionic Commando and how great that game is. Oh my god. If we didn't have to play all these other games, I could just play that game right now, and I, I, and I, and I would. Um, pretty solid top ten here. Bionic Commando at number one. Super Mario Brothers at number two. Rygar at three. River City Ransom at four. Super Mario Brothers 2 at number five. Contra at 6, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out at 7, Blaster Master at 8, The Goonies 2 at 9, and Gun Dot Smoke uh, rounding out our top 10. That's a pretty good list. I, I, it, will that be the final top 10? I'm going to guess no, but that's, the, that's a list of great games right there. I feel like you couldn't really go wrong with any one of those games. This is a, a murderer's row of video games. I think even we send it down, you know, the top 15, 16 games here. This is a, this is a great, this is a good looking list. Like, I, do I think that Cobra Triangle will be a top 20 game when all said and done? Absolutely not. Top 50, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. And then we get down to the bottom. And, well... We're left with, uh, well, hits like Super Pitfall, Master Chew and the Drunkard Hue, Taboo, the Sixth Sense, Chiller, which is an unlicensed video game, Back to the Future, which didn't, should not have been licensed, is, is a cr crime against a lot of people, a lot of victims. We talk about victimless crimes a lot, like stealing cable, uh, but uh, Back to the Future for the NES is not a victimless crime. There are a lot of victims there. You, me, Mar Marty McFly, the people at Nintendo who uh, gave it as some kind of seal of approval, engaged in some form of gross negligence. A lot of lawsuits could come out of this, uh, this thing, I'm saying. Where's Waldo, which is... Uh, I'm very close to getting all of the retro achievements in Where's Waldo, and one day I will do it. I don't... It's, one day I will do that. One day I, I, will, I will finish that off, because... It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Swamp Thing, Athena, Circus Caper, which uh, for a long time there, I thought Circus Caper was clearly going to be the bottom of the barrel. Nothing could be any worse. Uh, but, but unfortunately, no, <laughs> the uncanny X-Men is worse and operation secret storm. Another unlicensed game simply must be seen to be believed. If you have not caught it, go back to episode 30 and give that a look. Uh, it's, um, it's something special. Will any of any of today's games make their way onto the extreme edges of this list? I don't know. But we're going to find out. Some of these games have been suggested by the Gerstmann Advisory Panel. If you're interested in signing up or just learning more about it or getting an ad-free podcast or all of these things, you can head over to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstmann. Sign on up. Join the, the sensation that is sweeping the gamer nation. Is it like a G, a GN for that? What do we need to, do we need some kind of, we need some kind of gang sign. Yeah, don't get me started. All right. <laughs> um, okay. We're going to, I like to, I like to get things going with a game that I'm, uh, ex, you know, like that I'm looking forward to putting on the list. I think some folks did suggest this game, but it's just, it's time. I was looking at the list of remaining games and I thought it's time to uh, to get into this one. It's another one of Nintendo's kind of black box original releases for the platform. Relatively early game in the grand scheme. It's a light gun game. 
We got a couple of those left here. And, well, I, I need to set this up. And it's called Gumshoe. Stevenson, I've got your daughter. Bring the five Black Panther diamonds to me within 24 hours or else. Come alone. Don't call me. I'll call you King Dom. Okay. So, this is the game's not being played right now. I don't think. Oh, maybe it is. It is, in fact, actually being played. Okay, sorry. So, we'll start over in a sec here, but just for the, uh, the, uh... Here's the thing about Gumshoe. It's a light gun game. Maybe this would be easier if I captured the cursor here. Let me... So this is a platformer that you play with a light gun. When I shoot him, he jumps. You don't want to touch the skulls. And uh, we want it. We need to. We need. We have to get the diamonds. And we have a limited number of bullets. When you shoot him to make him jump, it does not use up a bullet. And uh, I guess we're supposed to shoot those to keep him from dying. Or jump over them, or, or, you know, whatever. Let's reset it. Well, 1986 joint. Yeah, who put that sky? King Dom put the skull block there, I'm sure. Got that car, I got 300 points. Oh my gosh, okay. I gotta be a little faster on the, the draw, on the mouse draw here, I guess. Because I'm, I'm not playing well. I cannot shoot the balloons. I was like, is that cactus going to kill me? I don't know for sure. Probably not. Fuck that bird! I Oh, I thought I shot that bird. I did not shoot that bird. You, you assume the flashes are from the emulator? No. When you played these light gun games on a regular TV, it flashed like this. That's how the light gun worked. Now, if you look, this is much like with uh, when we were playing Baby Boomer the other day. You can see the hitboxes for everything on screen when you pull that trigger. And that is a little bit more noticeable in an emulator than I remember it being in on, on a regular television. Uh, so when you when you pull the trigger in game, you'll see the box around around Stevenson, I guess. Or I, I, am I Stevenson or am I a gumshoe that has been hired by Stevenson? To, I, I don't know. 
but you'll see every time I pull the trigger here and shoot, uh, when it does flash, you see that box around him. That is his hitbox. And so we'll see when other shootable objects come on screen, you'll see a box around them as well. And, you know, you can, you can see the hitboxes, which is kind of neat. From a, like, how does this game work kind of perspective. Is this ground down here below me? Or, well, I guess a car was driving on it, so it's not water. Oh, I was pulling the trigger on that bottle? Are we Black Panther? No, we're, we're getting the Black Panther diamonds. So there are, as I understand it, probably six levels in this game. Uh, you need to get the five diamonds, one per level. And then presumably you are permitted to finish the game. thing about this is like, okay, so they don't make you lose a, a bullet when you shoot your character to jump. But as a kid, I would miss a lot. And so I feel like I was perpetually almost out of bullets because I would just be trying to make him jump and I would, you know, you'd miss and, and waste a bullet. Ah! I went to go do... I am... This might this may be one of those cases where this game would have been easier uh with the gun. Wait, pink, pink am I am I couldn't tell you what the, the, you know, can I absorb a hit without dying now, maybe? Is that what that is? I don't need these balloons that bad. To get that close to the skulls. Danger. Oh, they were right. It's dangerous. God damn it. Okay. Okay. I, this music is is awesome. This is a great little tune. And I don't know if uh, Gumshoe was exactly... Oh, man, I was just, like, punching the fire button at that point, trying to make my way through that.
something, you know, I wasn't necessarily prepared to deal with this morning. Upon uh, knowing, you know, knowing that we were going to be playing some gumshoe today. I was not prepared for the possibility of, what if this game totally sucks? In my mind, Gumshoe was a game that always got kind of a bad rap. This sucks. What the fuck? Like, you have no time to shoot those rocks. I was going to make the screen, the, the window smaller, thinking that maybe that would make it easier, but it is not readily changing scale. I don't, I don't feel like digging into the settings. Yeah, I played a lot of this. I played a lot of Gumshoe. I never finished Gumshoe. But I was able to get a few diamonds. I was able to get through the first few levels of Gumshoe. Well, now I didn't get my... Well, maybe we'll still have a chance to get one. If we go into the boulder section we and we haven't yet acquired a potion, we're going to be extra screwed. We're extra screwed. unhappy. Okay, Gumshoe. This time's gonna be different. This time we're gonna get it done. I can feel it. I guess I could, uh... No, because then the targets are gonna be smaller and you're, it's gonna be even more finicky. It's, it's gonna be way worse if I try to play this in a smaller window. Uh... 
Uh, but the window scale changed, so let's uh, get it back. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. All right. Here we go. So it's, it's so dramatic. This pulpy noir soundtrack. I need that send and light gun. Man, if you think I'm frustrated playing this, you should have seen me trying to configure the send and light gun. And having next to no luck making it work. Skulls. I like his little wiggly uh, animation when he is in the air. That really is just his walk animation, but like, ooh, you shot me! Like, it's just, this is conceptually so fucking stupid. And like, what is the perspective of here? Uh, here am I, like, I, in my head, I was always like, I was the sniper covering him and making sure he stayed safe. I was the other man in his operation. cruising. That noise means the diamond is close. Alright, we got the diamond. I think if you don't get the diamond, the level just loops forever. Until you get it. And I think later levels are things like, oh, you made the wrong decision about, you know, whether you were, oops, uh, whether you were going up or down, and as a result, you are not on the right path to even collect the diamond, so go fuck yourself. Fucking giant armadillo, man. What? 
fuck's going on? Yes! Yes! This game's great. Alright, it's midnight. Another banger, man! Listen to this! Oops! Oh, okay. That cloud is gonna stop me from going up. Do you think this game has continues? Do you think it does? That'd be nice if it did. So if I, if I don't let it go back to the title screen, it'll continue? Okay. Well, now we know for next time. I feel like in a lot of ways this is, you know, like there, there's it's, this is one of the most forgotten soundtracks. Maybe in like first party Nintendo history. It's got all the hallmarks of of the genre, you know? But uh boy, this is bringing back some memories and and the memories are 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 actually bad. I think this is like a cool and innovative idea. But also, ah. But also this game is like a pain in the ass to play. And it was then too. Like I, that, that's that's sort of the that's the point, right? It, it's a weird light gun game. You know, it's a very weird game for it, for especially for like '86 or whatever. You know, the idea of like, hey, let's let's make this game. You play. It's a platformer. You play solely with the light gun. Like that's dumb, but also a disgusting genius. A disgusting kind of genius on display here. Oh! No, I didn't want to do that. Oh boy. Probably could have threaded that needle there between those skulls, but... But I didn't. No, no, no! Oh, man, I just gotta get to the stage and do the turn. Thank <laughs> you. 
No, I did it again. Okay, this is fine. No, it's not fine. I'm so angry. I'm so... Ugh. Okay. And yeah, so, you know, I was, what, 11 or 12 or something when I got my hands on this game. And, uh... It was it was hard. It was you know it is it is a hard game. It's it's a hard game with the gun. Like now that I'm kind of like getting my mouse legs, my mouse light gun legs underneath me, I'm having a, an easier time with it than I was 20 minutes ago. But uh, but also. really torn here thinking about like talking about this game thinking about this game because i i do think that this is cool because you know <laughs> look at it look at this wiggly man flying through the air oh my god Ocean. There. Also, as a kid, I never got enough balloons, and the balloons give you more bullets. And so I feel like, uh, especially, you know, at the midpoint, you know, kind of getting into the later levels of the game, I was perpetually almost out of bullets. Gotta keep it together. secret here in so far as that there is a secret is that every time you pull the trigger the thing the moving things on screen stop and slow down a little bit so if you just hammer that trigger you get a lot more time to deal with like falling boulders or things of that nature Oh, jeez. 
Okay. Alright, we've lost our green bonus. Oh, fuck you. What the? Are you kidding me? Or what the? I, 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 no, no, screw that up. I would have needed to have fallen and then... Okay, so we pull the trigger at the... Okay, yeah, sure enough. What's the name of that game? Is that, uh, it was a GBA game, wasn't it? Was it Picto Picked? Or was that a DS game? Where it had the soundtrack of all the kind of like, uh, uh, deconstructed NES games. I want to say that there's some, uh, some gumshoe in there. Picto bits. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Why am I not using my Sindon? Because every time I've tried to configure it, it doesn't fucking work. Not worth, not worth the hassle. I bought that thing because there was talk at the time uh, that uh, some developers were going to try to make the Sindon work on the Mister, and so I was like, oh well, that'd be cool. And and if it works on the PC, that's a cool bonus or whatever. But uh, why well, I was pulling the trigger there and it never, it did not let me continue again. I guess so. Um, I was I was not able to set it. the the couple of times I've tried I've not been able to set it up and then I would always like run out of time and be like okay I can't I can't fuck with this anymore and so I'll start over again some other time and see if I can make it work so so that thing has been a total bust. Anyway, Gumshoe. This is Gumshoe. You can shoot the man and make him jump. And then also you have to keep him safe by shooting the things around him. Great music. I... I... Th there's... gonna be one of those heartbreakers where I, I like there's this there's something about this game I very much do like conceptually but scientifically speaking I think th those things don't translate so hey I'm a lot I'm doing a lot better than I was a little while ago gotta say that think about this game is what if you could hold a controller in your other hand and just push a button to make him jump I feel like that would be a convenient thing but the more I think about it that would just make the game worse 
the fun of that game is you shoot the man and he jumps. And so <laughs> you end up in these desperate situations where you're like, oh my God, I need to get up there right now. There's all these skulls down here and you're just like hammering the trigger, making him jump over and over and over again. Uh, slowing down the scroll as you're doing so to try to to make make that whole thing happen. Um, and uh, yeah, Gumshoe, Gumshoe, a game I've always had a soft spot for. I've, I, I, and I still do, even after this is the first time I've played Gumshoe in quite some time. And, um, I, there's just something about, there's something about Gumshoe. But it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, and so th there's, when you, when you get into some of these later levels and you have to deal with, um, trickier ways to get to the diamond and and missing the diamond and having to repeat part of the level to get another chance to get the diamond like that is miserable the later levels of gumshoe are are pretty pretty terrible um pretty frustrating I like the idea of it though. That's 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 all I can really say about it. Uh, in, in a positive sense, is I think the music's really great. Uh, and um, but at the same time, the 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 whole like the, the, it is a frustratingly difficult game. I guess is what I would say about it. Um. There's a sound idea there, but it it, it does not. It, it does not stick the landing. It, it barely, it barely sticks the takeoff. I don't know. Um, but yeah, heck of a soundtrack. Where does Gumshoe go on this list, man? Like. <sighs> It's no 3D world runner. You know, it's no Jackie Chan's action kung fu. It's no Ring King. It's no elevator action. It's no Akari Warriors, that's for sure. I think Gyro Might is a better game. Um, or entertaining weird gimmick on top of that, but also just structurally more enjoyable. I don't think it's as good as Solstice, the quest for the staff of Demnos. It's not as good as Karate Champ. It's no Popeye. Not as good as the Legend of Kage, but we're kind of, you know, this is starting to, it's not as good as Duck Hunt. I mean, if we're looking for like a more apples to apples, I think Duck Hunt is a game that knows its, uh, knows its constraints. It knows, you know, they made it, it's a, it, it is a light gun game in the classic sense, right? Um, this game is in some ways more ambitious, but less successful. But it's definitely. Somewhere in here. Huh. Okay. Gumshoe is better than the Three Stooges.
Gumshoe is better than Bomberman 1. Gumshoe is not as good as Marble Madness. Puznik is a better game. Fester's Quest is a... Uh, hmm. Hmm. It is, uh, man, Gumshoe. It, it, like, Gumshoe, is, it's hard to classify because it is so different than these other games. Um, you try to classify it as a platformer, then it's, like, bottom of the list. Like, ugh, it's terrible. <laughs> Platforming is bad. But, um, but Gumshoe is... <sighs> is Gumshoe better or worse than Hudson's Adventure Island? It is worse. Is Gumshoe better than Yo Noid? No. 1942 is also a better game. Is Gumshoe better than Bad Dudes? I guess not. I guess not. Is Gumshoe better than Wario's Woods? Hmm. Okay. Well, here's what we have. Gumshoe is our new number 180. It's no Fester's Quest. But I, you know, <laughs> I do have so I do have a sick love for Gumshoe. I I can't it's hard to explain. But Gumshoe. I played a lot of I played a lot of Gumshoe, ultimately. Next up, a game suggested by many, like Raymond, Ian, and Tim. Uh, that it's finally time to get into. I watched a little bit of video of this game being played last night to get a sense of what it is, because it's one of these late era 1991 games that I'm just like, what even is this? And it's called Nightshade. Beam Software would do a lot of ports. Uh, I believe they did one they did one of the ports of Smash TV if I remember right. And so what we have here, oh, there's this. Now there is no one to stop me in my reign of evil. Oh, that's a they really uh they really get you started, huh? Okay, let's back this chair into this candle.
What? That bomb just blew up and I didn't die. Okay. Examine candle. Operate candle. Operate money. Can I pick up the candle? We can. Okay. So this is an adventure game of sorts here where we have... Jump, fight, talk, cancel. All right, it's got things living in it. Okay, sure. But that's, there's no, is this a way out? No. Kind of a clunky, kind of a clunky interface. Um, ah, uh, you got me. We've got a lever. Caution, self-destruct mechanism, do not touch. Okay. Operate. Lever. Nightshade, this is going to be... The, the, okay, fuck this. <laughs> like, you make the character disappear when I do this, so just... Well, we've, we flipped the switch. It doesn't seem to have killed it. Okay, all right, let's flip it again. What do you mean he's too far away? He's right there. Oh, this... If I push up from the candle, it plays this little noise. Can't even look at the armor because I'm too far away. Oh, this, oh, this game. Oh boy. Hey, we found a key. Did I take the key? Okay, we took the key. Okay, it appears we can go, oh, oh. Let's try to talk. Talk to Gent. There is no reply. Oh, shit. else we can interact with here, or is it just the lever? No, it's not use. It's, uh. 
No, it's still not used. I need to hit the select key. Oh my god. Operate lever. Well, okay. Yeah, it seems like you should be able to get out and continue, but instead, splork. Metro City is mine! Oh, look at that. That's a nice picture. I have achieved complete weed status. Okay. Did I just lose a bunch of health? Was that the, was it, was that am I supposed to like stay away until the bomb blows up and then get behind the wall. Well, I mean, we're so close to the start. Let's try that. Let's just see what that looks like. I like the ambition of them calling this Nightshade Part 1. Oh yeah, for the long-running Nightshade franchise that we're creating right here, it's gonna be, uh... It's like Shenmue. The next game is going to encompass parts two through six of the Nightshade franchise. Pick up candle. Examine armor. Now we have a key. There's a crowbar. Can we bash that guy's skull in or Alright, that's as far as we're going that way. statue has a keyhole. Use key. Statue. The key turns. An ancient Egyptian coin. Did I automatically get it or... Okay. And we still have the key. What a novel idea. That if you use a key, it does not break the key or destroy the key. Okay, this is the only room down here, so I guess the next the thing we have to do is is fight that guy, huh? So the fighting is uh oh is this, is this desk a thing? Eh. A flashlight. Okay. A flashlight and a screwdriver.
So we have a jump button and a punch button, and there's kind of combos. Something behind it, okay. No, we don't, we don't. Use crowbar on picture. Like, I, I find myself mashing, like, hitting a button to, like, make it, to clear a text prompt. And then it's not responsive, so you hit it again, and then it res all responds, and suddenly you are back in this menu again. Ugh. Too far away, are you kidding me? Where the crowbar was, right? Well, jump is not a button, it's a command over here, so. No? I guess I'm just, like, lined up enough to not have to do that. What is this? Screws. Is this something I could walk on? It sure doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, it just so happens that we got, uh... an S driver. Whoops. Did I err? That was probably that uh, chandelier crashing to the ground, right? The river spirit has eaten many secrets. Dude, this game <laughs> is... Uh, you know, it's cool that, that there were not, you know, hey, there, there are not a lot of games like this on the NES, right? I mean, that's, it's kind of crazy. Um, ah, oh, fuck you. Are you kidding me? What? I did. This is how I went last time. I went all. I walked all the way to the bottom and was able to walk across. And now it is not letting me do that. Let's try going high. A well-oiled lever. Nothing like a well-oiled lever, I say. Well, we sure hit that switch. 
Oh, and now there's okay. There's just nowhere. There's no way to go that way. Is, is there these windows? Is this open? Is that the joke? Is that just like the levers never do anything in this game? Because it's very funny. This is, uh, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This It's such a weird... To have this kind of, like, lightly jokey adventure game. 91 on the NES. Like, this kind of... And they had to come up with their own system, so you've got this weird fighting system in there that's real-time. And you're, you know, using the D-pad to walk around. And, like, it's, a, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. But at the end of the day, it's still a it's it's still a platform that really only has four buttons, and it's it's just not like this interface is really rough. What is this staircase? Okay. jump? What a weird... What is this? Just a, this is a mechanically strange video game. Oh, well, maybe we insert the Egyptian coin into this. Scarab? Okay, we did. Don't I have a proper cape? King Rat, Goliath, Lord Muck, and the Ninja Mistress. Does this game have any kind of save system at all? Is this the rat I've heard so much about? There's no reply from the rat man. We don't have a lot of health, so I don't envision this going great.
All right, well, I operated it with my feet. Kind of weird to have the two levers uh, right next to each other, and also the selection box that you have is big enough to encompass both levers in that situation. We have once again achieved complete weed status. I'm not going to do this all again. Because all of it is so slow, <laughs> you know, like getting back to that point that we were just at. It's going to take fucking forever. Operate switch. For me, this screen right here is some nonsense. So, like, look at this. We're walking off the edge and we're going down some stairs, and then what happens? Like, oh, now we're. Like, if I just held down here, we would just warp back and forth forever. Because it just, like, puts you on this other area where you're kind of going up. never did examine the bone. Just a bone, I guess.
No save, huh? Okay, I didn't realize I was a superhero. like BMX triple X all over again. Yes, okay, yes, see the little goblin, yes, of course. A lot of bouncers around here, huh? What a ridiculous thing. Well, it's a good thing I got a screwdriver, huh? Use. An S driver for this, or uh, we're using a crowbar for this. Okay, so fit fit down it then. Oh, what do I gotta use it? Operate air vent. There we go. Oh. So which switch do we want to hit here to not die? Not 
Nightshade is free! Oh. Hi there. Welcome to Al's Grocery Store. This game, uh... Hmm. Operate girl. Come on, come with me. Oh. This is anytime you see me on the streets, just know that I'm going to be doing this, working on my punches. Dude, you eat shit so much in these fights. Oh, that's nice that it's like a different thing. I thought it was just gonna be the same thing every time and it just went faster every time or something. What if I simply walk away from it? No. Uh... Pipe on pipe. I'm a pipe to pipe bushman. Haha, <laughs> 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 you didn't figure out the trap in time. And now you have to restart the entire game. That's, uh, it's, that's a neat idea, right? The, you're like, oh, here's some here's some cool uh, traps that you get into, or or whatever else. But like, um, losing all your progress. And, okay, yeah, still zero percent, huh? Still complete weed status. Um. Yeah, if if this game had had battery backup, like uh, any kind of sane password system, any, you know, anything like that, 
if it had had any kind of anything. Especially for 91, when that was a lot more commonplace, it, it seemed like. I, um... It's really crazy, uh... For a, a point-and-click adventure game with a game over, like, like, that you can very easily stumble into that game over sequence and have to start over again is, uh... is really pretty wild. Um... This has neat ideas, man. Uh, this is really... It's ambitious in a way that you're like, hey, this this is like overreaching for the platform it's on. Uh, you're almost going a little too hard if you'd waited a few years and, you know, if this had been a SNES game and if it had had battery backup, like the additional buttons would have afforded you more a cleaner interface, uh, you know, the better resolution. Maybe you could have put some of that interface on screen at all times. Um, you know, recovering health out of combat or something like, like there's just different little things like that, that like it has really neat ideas, but you're in these setups where you're like, oh, I need to do this fight and I have barely any health. And what am I, what am I to do here? Uh, I'm sure sure you do eventually find some kind of health recovery somewhere, but um, but yeah, this is really interesting. This is a really interesting game. For 91, you know, for that kind of oh, another rat man? How many rat mans are in this game? This game and I know I say this about a lot of games um, this game scans as British as a motherfucker about the color palette and uh, hey check it out we have this gigantic HUD at the bottom of the screen that includes the name of the game in it <laughs> because we don't want to draw all this stuff on the screen I don't mean that as a bad thing by the way like I, that's that's not meant to be like derogatory But yeah, Beam is Australian. Yeah. Um, but this this has like again, that that kind of like spectrum action adventure game thing. Um And the diff like look at this, like the different size things, like that Batman game for the Commodore 64 that I think also came out on Spectrum that was trying to do like a comic book thing as well like, would do that as well. It'd be, like, panels of the comic. So some screens would be significantly smaller than others. And, like, like there's... Like, this game is... is re reminds me of some of those games. Uh, maybe if instead of playing a man in a trench coat or whatever, if we were some kind of egg creature, some kind of walking egg, then, uh, then maybe this game would be awesome. But I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, th this is cool. This is really cool. Especially for the platform. I mean, not a lot of games like this on the NES. Not a lot of, of developers willing to try to do the adventure game, the point-and-click adventure game thing on the NES because you didn't have a good pointing device. But also, you know, remember that Maniac Mansion was mostly played on computers that didn't have a mouse or, or rather like the mouse was not the default way you interacted with it. Like the Commodore 64 is thought of as the, I, I think the definitive version of the first maniac mansion game. And you played that with a joystick, uh, because the mouse on the C64, you never used for anything other than geos, geos, geos. When you had to load up some stuff and print some things, then you could use your mouse, but I don't know. Maniac Mansion on the C64 didn't even support the mouse, if I remember correctly. Uh, and so that type of like point and click adventure game with a non ideal pointer uh, was, was kind of the order of the day uh, for a while there. And I, yeah, I, I, Nightshade is, is very interesting. And I think the the combat in it it does not necessarily feel good per se, 
but it's fast. It's snappy. You're moving like an action game. It does, you know, like you, you aren't, if you, if the combat took place at the same walking speed that the rest of the game did, whoo, whoo. But instead it's like they put a bad little fighting game in the middle of it and you get to go punch a rat guy and a ninja and all this other stuff. You're like, that. there's really, there's something to this. And it's, it's a fascinating thing uh, in, in context of the platform, right? Also weird that Ultra would probably, you know, like, hey, we're, Konami's putting out this thing. Um, if it, yeah, if, if that game had come out with battery backup and, and was a little more reasonable in terms of, you know, like not losing your progress. The, the, the conversations around that game would probably be significantly different. Um, but where does Nightshade go on our list? That's the question. Hmm. It's, you know, you, 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 the scientifically speaking, you want to acknowledge and reward that ambition while still not letting it off the hook and, and, and saying like, Hey, you know, the, not, not necessarily, not necessarily a great game, but kind of awesome that it exists. I'm glad this exists, but that doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's better than slalom, for example. Um, But it's probably not too far, you know, like, like ultimately I, I think that, you know, you kind of have to acknowledge it as like, it's, it's, <sighs> is it better than this port of pirates? Like it's better than maniac mansion, which is a weird, cause I, I, cause that's such a clunky version of the game. And uh, you know, uh, I think the ambition of this carries it further. But not, not really by much, man. Like, like really, you know, it's no wampum. Uh, is it better than Schoon? Like Nightshade is a game I would love to play. Like if it if it had a, a little more if if the interface was a bit friendlier to interact with. Like that that's a that's a game that would have been that I, I would love to see more of that thing because it is such a strange like and, and the universe right off the bat. I love that it just gets started. That they're just like, Nope, you're 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 tied to a chair and the game is going. You're like, oh, wow, okay. Like that's cool. Uh, it's a neat game. Hmm. But it, it's no, it is no wampum. It is no schoon. Is it better than that port of Cabal? It's, it's, it's like a pretty solid port of Cabal, all told. It's no excite bike. You know, let's rethink it. Let's 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 have the conversation here about Maniac Mansion. Is Nightshade better than Maniac Mansion? It's easy to write Maniac Mansion off because it's not the the right version of the game, right? Um, Maniac Mansion is a very funny game for its time. It has like fun puzzle solutions. I think, generally speaking, it's it's a little less bullshitty than. Some of the other like scum engine, like, like Lucas games, you know, it's a great game, not a great port, uh, of, of what, like ultimately Maniac Mansion, I think is one of the greatest games of all time. Um, 
but it's such a weird port and it's just feels bad on its platform. Nightshade doesn't have all of like, like that going for it, you know, like Nightshade is its sense of humor is, well, they, they tried to write in the style of a, of an adventure game uh, <laughs> of the era. They tried to crack some jokes here. Um, they do have an, an action component to it that I think is, is like a fascinating, a fascinating thing. Um, hmm. is nightshade better than maniac mansion? I do think Nightshade is better than Sky Kid. So, like, ultimately, we're kind of talking about is it directly above or directly below Maniac Mansion? And. Yeah. All right. So. Nightshade is our new number 107. It's better than Sky Kid. You know? And Sky Kid's cool. But yeah, Maniac Mansion, you know, like, like I saw some people going like, oh, those, just, like, yes. The, the, Lucas got better and better at making sensible, like, adventure games in the years past Maniac Mansion, for sure. Uh, but I mean, you know, when you compare it to some of the Sierra stuff and, and some of the other business that was out there, like Maniac Mansion felt like a step towards the light in so many ways. Um, I'm a big Day of the Tentacle fan. Bold, I know. But, uh, man, I remember because that game felt like it came decades it, like it felt like the the gulf of time as a child between maniac mansion and day of the tentacle felt like a billion years to the point when they said hey we're making a sequel to maniac mansion i was like what that old thing really oh my god that's amazing are you crazy that's so cool like the it just felt like maniac mansion at that point to me from my perspective as a kid and just how fast things were happening in games or, or whatever. Um, Maniac Mansion felt like the oldest game in the world. Cause you know, day of the tentacle ended up being a PC game, a CD ROM game. Even I, I played it with CD ROM audio and Maniac Mansion was an ancient C64 game. And you're like, what? Oh, you're making a sequel to that. That's so fucking cool. And it's so good. It's so good. And they got Les Nessman to do the voice for Bernard, and that's a great choice. Speaking of great choices, let's make some more. Frederick and Chili Bus suggested this next game. I believe this one is unlicensed. And so I'm not really sure what we're in for. The box art said is, is for play on Nintendo. I have what appears to be four different versions of it. This one is labeled version 6.1 and that's the latest one. So we'll go with that one, I guess. And it's a little something called. Spiritual Warfare. So far, so good. Always weird to see a console game with a version number right on its title screen. From your good friends at Wisdom Tree, 1992. So newer than Nightshade. And thus better, right? Graphics by Nina. Oh shit, Nina did this shit? Damn! You can tell by the sword. Look at how on fire that sword is. 
You know Nina did this shit. What, Charles J gonna draw a flaming sword? No. This is how you start on the second quest. So when you, I, I, when I pause it, the music changes. Okay, we have a fruit of the spirit pear, pomegranate, apple, grapes, banana. Use this to end game. Oh, and get a password. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? We got three apples. You found the pear. It's your first fruit of the spirit. Use the A button to throw it. Hi, go down these stairs and look around. Once you find the belt of truth, you'll be able to leave the park. What? These guys just walking around with friggin' knives in wife beaters. Like, what? what is this park? It's gangbangers. Is the Bible game trying to make me scared of gangs? Yeah, that's right. Suck pear, get peace. I'm finna hook up these barrels. Nope. Oh, shit. One of six pieces of the armor of God. With it, you can move obstacles. Great. Do I need to select that in my inventory or I just have that? Okay. Armor of God represents meekness. Okay, so we can we can move objects now. I heard this described as like a really uh, kind of trashy Zelda style game, and yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? Wonder if I can move those barrels up here now. Oh, these are bombs, huh? I thought they were apples. Travel slowly, but is very powerful. I don't have enough. I don't have enough faith. You look like a 
bitch. Why don't you come back when you got 40 faith? Oh, shit. Why don't you go get Bibled, son? What was that? Anointing oil restores health. Praying hands. Ten spirit points equals half a heart. A vial of God's wrath. Can I drink this? Can I drink the vials? I know that they're, they make good bombs, but like... I don't know. I feel like I've gone to the store and I've bought some things that might as well be a vial of God's wrath. In reality, it's just a bottle of Mad Dog 2020. I shot that gangbanger and the devil came out of him. Like, this, these guys walking around look like magic from Blood In, Blood Out. Kinda. <laughs> Alright, let's shoot some hoops. For the Lord. Sorry, basketball is for sinners. You can't get in there. That's right. I didn't realize until just now that the animation was you shoot them and then they pray. I threw a pear at that guy and then he prayed. Hey, what's up? Uh, Jesus said that uh, God's worth is, uh, let's say, truth. It seems like that. Nice bow tie. Was this meant to be like bootleg Howard Phillips over here? Uh, and you shall know the truth, and the truth sa uh, shall set you free. Who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? No man comes to the Father, but through me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's just true. God desires that blank be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. All men. Sorry, ladies. down here laying down some of God's wrath. You know how we do. something else, man. I've never seen this before. I 
I should probably go buy the what the apple or whatever, huh? Oh, this is how we get out of the park. Well, I gotta go back and buy the apple. Travel slowly, but it's very powerful. It represents patience. We're going to stick with the pair. Unless we run into a powerful enemy that needs to get their prey on. If you'd like the raft, you'll need Samson's jawbone. Rumor has it, the jawbone is in a locked room in the shipyard. Okay. You know what I like about this game compared to a lot of other unlicensed games is it's not a fucking flickery disaster. Those rocks cannot be blown up. These ones can, though. It's like a piece of heart. Y'all got that Bible trivia? Uh, Jesus told disciples to preach the gospel to every creature. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God for salvation. The apostle Paul was I don't know. I don't know. Ashamed. Oh, not ashamed. Oh well. John the Baptist preached for men to repent and blank the gospel. Believe the gospel. Evil men went to the churches in Galatia to pervert the gospel. It seems like something that would happen. I was thinking about trying to get on these train tracks, but... Oh, uh, well I guess we... You need a ticket to ride the train. Well, y'all selling tickets or what, you know, I go in here. Oh, this is okay. This is over here. All right. Well, let's we said we could leave the park. If we go over this way, here's the basketball kid. What's going on over here? I'm 
much faith does it cost to get a train ticket? Come on, it's a choo-choo! You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the devil's music. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll get some what Amy Grant going on in here. We've got these Katy Perry albums we can put on. Now that you have the belt of truth, push this rock out of the way to exit the park. Oh man, now we're out on the streets where it's really crazy. level up my alright now we're talking Yeah, construction worker. Get preached on. That'll teach you for setting up a bunch of saw horses. So now will those be gone next time since enemies don't always respawn? Yeah. That's weird. Oh, here we go. An infinite number of enemies coming out of this bar. Hey, you'd better stay away from bars. Thanks, kid. Enjoy your lollipop. This game is great. claim it somewhere in the slum. Like, what are, you, what are you saying about the slum? Do we have a map? I guess we do sort of have a map here, huh? It's like a, you know, seems like a reasonably sized world. What if I was just going into the bar to try to let the sinners in there know about the word of the Lord? What then, huh? What am I? I'm just supposed to just like, oh, I just never go in there. Would Jesus have gone into the bar? I think so. I think so. This game is bullshit. out a bunch of explosives here for Satan. <laughs> oh, I'm getting hit. We're getting touched out here. It's rough on these streets.
All right, we got key in here. Can I use the key to get, get back in the bar? Suck it, businessman. You better have the breastplate before you enter this area. Thanks, kid. need to find the slum. Uh, can I blow this stuff up? Is that... No, guess not. No. Guys up here sinning. The faith of an olive seed can move a mountain, sure. Oh no? Okay, all right. I just, that sounds like some Bible shit. The blank amazed Jesus with his great faith. The ruler? The centurion? It is impossible to please God without feet picks. Faith. The blank man shall live by faith. The righteous man. All preach repentance towards God and faith in Jesus. You know, I think my grandmother pressured my mom into having me go to church for a while. And uh, so for a while, my mom would drive me to my grandmother's and we would go to church and I would go to Sunday school. And uh, boy, I didn't like doing that. Sunday school was just like, did you memorize the verse we told you to memorize last week? And I'm like, no, no. And sometimes I would, and sometimes I wouldn't. I don't know. Um, and then after like, a, I, I want to say it was like a couple of years of that, man. Of going to Sunday school. And I guess what happened is my grandparents moved away. I think is, is actually the thing that got me out of doing that finally was that they moved to another state. And then I didn't have to do that shit anymore. got to the slums and they tried to run over me with a motorcycle. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, as a kid, the question I kind of kept asking, uh, or not kept asking, but asked often enough to realize what I was asking was, you know, not cool. Uh, was, hey, you know, if we're all descended from Adam and Eve, aren't we all products of incest? Isn't that bad? They didn't, they didn't, they didn't like me bringing that up. Be careful, gangs are fighting in the junkyard. Oh, Jesus. Look at these sinners. Where's this Stardust? Okay. Dogs cannot be made to pray. Instead, the dogs killed you. <laughs> I just want to get my belt back. Dogs cannot be dealt with with the wrath of God either. I, I, this game is fine. I don't know. Um, it seems very like I don't know. Like if we if we were just judging the unlicensed games, if we were just trying to look at the licensed games and rank those, this seems like a, it, uh, setting aside games that were from established game developers who just like were like fuck you. We're not going to get a license. Like the Tengen cartridges and, and some of that sort of thing. Um, but if we're looking at the uh, unlicensed games from producers of unlicensed games, from proud producers of unlicensed games, that's probably one of the best ones I've seen. It's certainly a better game than Chiller or uh, Master. Chew and the drunkard Hugh. Who? Hugh? Who? But as far as like, you know, kind of like your little Zelda-ish knockoff kind of thing, it's 
fine. The Bible stuff is silly and off, most heavily presented as trivia, but then it's like, you're throwing for this fruit represents meekness. And this fruit represents, you got this, we put bombs in the game, but it's the wrath of God. It's a vial of the wrath. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, it just seems like straightforward, pretty easy. Um, well, you know, easy until you get to those spots with like the three dogs or like, here's all these guys shooting. And maybe if you get more of the armor of God, you can withstand those bullets. I don't know. Like you strap a bunch of thick enough Bibles to yourself and, uh, you know, it'll stop a bullet or two probably. But where does that put it on our list? Like, it's not a great game, but it's, it's perfectly playable. You know, it's this middle of the road, like, yeah, all right. Like, it's interesting in its own weird way. But, uh, boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Um, spiritual warfare, where does it go? You know, it's hmm. you know, like it, it's no space shuttle project. It's no King's Night. King's Night sounds like the name of a Bible game, but uh, it's no Solstice: The Quest for the Staff of Demnos. That's for sure. It's uh, less scientifically accurate than Dino Wars' destruction of a Spondulus. I mean, that much is guaranteed. Um, you know, it's no Spelunker. It's not as good as this Port of Mule. Like it's no base wars, but like it's pro it's 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 in it's better than Kid Clown in Nightmare World. It's not as good as Thrilla's Safari, another biblical game. It's better than Flight of the Intruder. And that's all I'll say about it. It's better than Flight of the Intruder. And so... Spiritual Warfare is our new number 149. Congratulations? You know, I, th I think when you think about Bible games of this era, you think about the absolute dregs, just absolute dog shit video games that they crammed a little bit of Bible into. This, this is okay. Uh, they still crammed a little Bible into it for you, but... Uh... Put it to you this way, and this is separate from the science here. This is separate from the science, but me personally, I would rather play Spiritual Warfare than Legacy of the Wizard. Will the science say the same? I don't know. We have not gotten, I don't believe we've gotten to Legacy of the Wizard. So uh, we'll see where that goes. But in my, in my heart, again, separately from the science, Legacy of the Wizard is like a down here kind of game. We'll, we'll see where it ends up when we get to the evidence. But Legacy of the Wizard is a miserable piece of shit. I would rather punch myself in the head than play that game. And you can even play as the weird dog in that game. That game, oh, that game is fucking terrible. Fuck that game. 
Jesus Christ. Fuck that game. Oh. Okay. Okay. Next up, Beckett recommended this game, and we're going to play it. I had to check and make sure this was real because I know this just got a weird re-release, and I was trying to figure out like, oh, is is this is this the only way? Was it was an unreleased game that only came out this way, or what the heck's the deal? It's Felix the Cat. Nineteen ninety two. I feel like that's the era, like when we get into these games that I've never heard of and never played or whatever, it is always these games that came out in the nineties. Because I moved on to the Genesis probably in like what, like late eighty nine or ninety or whenever, you know. Like if not right at the launch of the Genesis, then damn close. Um And so, I, like, and yeah, Felix the Cat is like a weird, you know, like, what is it, from the 60s or something? So I don't even, I don't know a damn thing about Felix the Cat. If you don't want to give me the bag, I'll get it from you anyway. The 30s? Okay, sure. Yeah, okay, I don't know. Check out this platformer. Like, this looks good. I mean, you know, it's not... I... And this is very silly. Now we're a tank. Sure. I feel like I was better off with the car because the shots were straightforward instead of this arc. Uh, th this game is uh, uneventful, is how I feel about it so far, you know? Like, it's not... Uh, it's cool. But, uh... I don't know. The bar for platformers in, at this time was so fucking high. Man. Thank <laughs> you. 
going to run to the restroom real quick. You think about this tank. And I'll be right back. It's a hot kids platformer with the hottest property for kids. Ten-year-olds love Felix the Cat. Right? Also, I don't think I realized that, like, my hearts are just draining out Adventure Island style. do any more of this. You know what I mean? Like, it, again, nothing wrong with it per se, but like, geez. <laughs> I don't want to just drive this tank around and shoot these same handful of enemies over and over again. stuff. This is uh, the production, you know, like solid production values. It looks really nice. It's colorful. Uh, it, it runs quickly. It's not choppy. It's, it's not... Now we got a, a flying stage. Oh, that would have been.
I keep missing those uh, M's. There's one. guy up here just doing hat man stuff you know how that hat man do oh Yeah, this is, uh, again, I... A totally fine... I would call it underwhelming. But, like, enjoyable. Like, it's fine. Ugh. But it's, uh, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, it's fucking boring. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, like, at, th at this point, uh, all, all these decades later, when there have been a lot of games, I think even in 92 when this came out, you know, there were a lot, there were a lot of games. And so this being this like late era NES game, you're like, what the fuck is, you know, like, sure. But like, it, it's, it's very pretty. Uh, like, it's, it's well animated. The characters are lively. Uh, the background variety has been, has been decent so far, I guess I would say. Just not the most inspired thing, I suppose. I think some some thought probably the the vehicle upgrades and power ups and stuff. I don't know. Those could have been more fun to use. Like the tank is is less fun to use than, or less useful than than this thing is, because this thing shoots a further straighter shot. I like the look of this guy though. Like check me out. I'm on like a. I got pogo shoes and a f fucking gun. We got some space left on the thing on the screen here. What do we do? I don't know. Why don't you write the word Felix there? What do I know? Oh, 
Oh. I like that he goes home between stages. I like that Felix goes home. He's like, I was in Egypt. It was crazy. Now, Felix World. Good. In some ways, this form feels a little overpowered because you can just, if you, as long as you're timing that button press right, you're kind of invincible to anything headed in your way. How many worlds are in this thing? This is what, three? Another flying level, huh? Let me get in my bag. I guess they kind of force you to engage with the levels a bit more if you want to maintain your form, right? Otherwise, oh man, we were a plane for a second there. You know, it'd be nice to have an upgrade here before going into this boss fight, but... Thank you. 
Oh, jeez. Yeah, what is he throwing there? It looks like frisbees to me. I don't know. I don't know. The master cylinder. Yeah, a perfectly competent video game. Lots of little power-ups and, and... Like it's well animated and... Music's pretty all right. I, uh, yeah, this is a very like decent little middle of the road game, but I, I don't, I, I don't. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> like the boss fights have been pretty unengaging. I'd, I'd say the whole thing's been been fairly unengaging so far. Yeah, just, uh, you know, decent little kids game, but like, yeah, not too young because, you know, there are still pits to fall into and... Oh, look at this. Okay, okay. A uh, third form. Yeah, I don't know. It's clever. It just if it had more of this, but I don't know how much more of this you do. You know, it's like he's he's got a water form, he's got an air form, he's got a regular form. <laughs> oh, apparently that's the only the only upgrade here. I like that he immediately falls asleep as soon as you let off on the D-pad, just like animation-wise, that's just a, a fun little thing. Whoops. Well, when I think about things you could have been doing in 1992, you know, which, you know, we're kind of taking time out of it a little bit here. So, that's not... That's not the end-all, be-all, uh, most relevant thing. But it just is interesting from a, like, I... Like... Is this what you're gonna play? Yeah, you, there's a lot of Arsenio Hall you could be watching.
But hey, you know, if you uh, if you did not buy uh, any 16-bit machine and you were dependent on the NES for fun, you know, you could certainly do a lot worse than this. I mean, we've hell, we've got a a list of games, many of which are uh, are worse than this. Ah, I keep missing that upgrade. Also, this movement is a little weird because you, they, they, if you stop moving, the current takes you back. So it's like hard to be still and line up these shots with this glove in this level as well. A turtle that shoots bubbles. Sure. Like, that's a draw, at least right now for me, right now, when I have not seen all of these forms. The draw of like, oh, I wonder what he turns into in the underwater stages. I'm like, oh, okay. Turtle. A turtle what shoots. Why not? A submarine. Yeah, okay. Shaped like his head. Yeah, not a tough, not a tough, <laughs> not a tough video game. I don't know. Gulpo. Same. 
Get Felix in that magic bag. The uh, retro achievements implementation of this is uh, generous with the achievements. Kind of one per hidden room and one per... Just about one per stage, I guess. That was a dinosaur. Killed him. But, uh, yeah, I just... Pleasant little game. We'll science it up here. I don't know if it's a set number of pickups that, that cause the power-ups to spawn. If it's like every 10 you get milk. Or every 10 you get alternating between milk and the power-up. I'm not really sure. But I bet it, I bet that's not random. That seems like a very set cadence of, hey, collect these things. And you will get, uh, and you will get these upgrades. I've just not been doing the counting. I like that it plays a little quiet version of the music when you pause. That's kind of kind of cute, I guess. Felix the cat. You could certainly play that. In fact, I did. I just played about half of it from the from the sounds of things. And I have 16 lives, so I could, you know, I could grind out the rest of this, I'm guessing. Unless it's got some weird difficulty spike at the end, like Arquista's Ring. Those Well, that's not even the end. The thing about Arquista's Ring, we played a, few, a couple weeks back, is apparently to truly finish that game, you got to finish it four times in a row. That's like twice as many as Ghosts and Goblins. We haven't even gotten to Ghosts and Goblins on this list. Oh, boy. We're going to have to play some Ghosts and Goblins here pretty soon. Felix the Cat is a likable experience. Um, I, you know, if you, if you like Felix the Cat, I'm sure that that probably helps. But uh, I, I yeah. <laughs> you know, the idea that this got like a limited run, like this recently got re-released in like physical form. You know, they did some kind of you know special edition thing for this. I don't think the game is worth it. Unless you're a big Felix the Cat head, which is anyone. I've never, I have never known anyone that's like, I love Felix the Cat. Like, it's just, uh, that's not a thing. There was a Felix the Cat branded car dealership on Figueroa up by USC, kind of where we used to stay, where our hotel used to be for E3. And it was next to a, uh, it was, it was pretty close to a Wiener schnitzel. Yeah. Felix is from 1919. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a steamboat Willie era kind of, you know, like, Hey, Felix, the cat recognizable character. Good on him for uh, over a hundred years of Felix, the cat, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, it's no Betty Boop. I mean, come on. You want to rank 100-year-old cartoon characters. It's no Snoopy. It's no Fritz the Cat. I mean, if we're 
All right. Uh, sure, man. Felix the cat. Like I said, this, you know, some, someone is like super jazzed on this and, and they're like way into Felix the cat. I don't even know what medium, like, is it like a Looney Tunes type situation where there's just a billion little shorts of Felix the cat? But I, I don't even know what form Felix the cat took in its, in, in his original outings or whatever. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I can't really tell you anything about the property really, but, uh, But as far as an 8-bit Nintendo game, that I can speak about. What if this was the thing? Like, oh, Felix the Cat. Yeah, Felix the Cat has languished in obscurity, but then the NES game came out, and I love Felix the Cat. The entire property now, because I played this game. Like, is there, who's that person? It's got to be someone. Um, Man. It's hard for me to feel anything one way or the other about Felix the Cat. It's just kind of like, yeah, okay, sure. Sure, man. But I would say, scientifically speaking, you know, it's, it is, it is a, a better game than Dino Wars Destruction of Spondylus, which has a, like a kind of a generic vibe to it as well. But at least you go through the, like, Hey, you're a dinosaur now. Hey, you're a dude now. I guess this, you know, you have Felix's different forms here, which is, you know, there are way more of those, uh, than the, you know, weapon upgrades or whatever you get in Dino Wars. I think we're, we're on the, the plus side of Dino Wars here. You know, Felix, you'd take it over, uh, you'd take it over a baseball. On my personal list, nine, non-scientifically speaking, Felix would be below Hyde Lied by a lot. Because that game has broken my brain. But Felix the Cat is a better game. Felix the Cat, weirdly enough, like, I f just, there's something about Sky Kid that's like, yeah, Felix the Cat, Sky Kid, kind of similar things. Sky Kid has some neat ideas. Felix the Cat has some neat ideas. And we're probably somewhere in this zone. Uh, Felix the Cat is no MC Kids, that's for sure. It's no Little Mermaid. Uh, it's no Wampum. Ah. <sighs> All right, let's let's highlight some of this list here and and narrow it down real fast here. Felix the Cat is like uh it's better than Kid Nicky Radical Ninja, which is another game that will live in my heart forever, but uh but we're kind of in this spot. It's, you know, it's more engaging than a lot of these arcade ports. Which feels blasphemous in a weird way, but, you know, if we think about the context of these games getting ported to the NES, like, you know, the idea of, like, Felix the Cat is better than Donkey Kong. You're like, get the, what, shut up. Oh, it isn't. But, like, yeah, it is. In the context of NES games and, and so on and so forth, it is. Um, you know, within reason. Is Felix the Cat better than Excite Bike? It is not. Eh. That's kind of close. I don't know. Felix the Cat, not as good as Cabal. It's not as good as Elevator Act. Eh. That's again, scientifically speaking, it is better than Elevator Action. Because that's another game on my personal list of games. Elevator Action is like... Way, way up there. I just played through Elevator Action Returns, the sequel, again, uh, a few days ago. Last week? Last weekend, maybe? What a great game that is. What a great game that is. Oh. But uh, the where we're at here is... Cabal is here. Felix the Cat is there. Elevator action is there, and what we are left with is
our new number 105. Congratulations to Felix the Cat for not quite cracking the top 100, but it's a top 200 game, which is beginning to mean something a little bit here. Now that we're up to 239 games, that is starting to, that, that top 200 game is starting to sound like almost something. What is it? Where's the covers are cut off here? Yeah, the adventures of Dino Ricky. Dino Ricky. At number 200. Yeah, Defenders of Dinotron City, that ain't no top 200 game. Pinball Quest won't be a top 200 game for too much longer here, I suspect. That's going to do it for us here. Uh, another week has come and gone. And I hope you have a, a wonderful weekend. We got to, yeah, we, we kind of only got to, we really only got to four games today, didn't we? Uh, next up on the list here for that I've got that we will use to seed the list for next week is the Adventures of Rad Gravity, which Fandel wanted to see, RBI Baseball, and Xevious. Xevious. Z I, I love Xevious. Is this a version of Xevious that I will love? Hmm. Eh. We'll find out next week. Until then, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later.